gravity is considerably higher than that of the truck. If, therefore, a trailer has a high load, the center of gravity moves upwards, while a reasonable load for a trailer is three times its own weight. If the load is off-center, it can be worked out mathematically when it will go out of control. There are also problems with its point of balance, which moves if there is a vertical impact on the coupling. While an off-center load brings the center of gravity only too quickly to the point of balance. Tankers are affected even more by these laws. When the truck accelerates or brakes, the liquid load continues its original motion. This is known as inertia, and it is this factor that causes the fluid in the tank to change its center of gravity, and with it, the center of gravity of the whole vehicle. This occurs at every change of speed, round every corner, when going either up or downhill. An empty tanker can take this corner at 40 miles per hour because it stays within the limits of both central force and tire adhesion and the center of gravity is at chassis height the same vehicle fully laden could only take the same bend at 28 miles per hour as the center of gravity has now moved even further upwards in the case of the two rear compartments being empty and the front one full the bend can only be taken at 22 miles per hour, as the center of gravity has now moved even further upwards. Only by obeying the laws of physics can a vehicle be driven safely. Braking brings its own problem. the truck and physical forces. To stop a 38-ton goods vehicle, a counterforce is needed. Brakes. The most efficient brakes halt a vehicle in the shortest possible distance, without locking the wheels. Should the wheels lock, the vehicle can no longer be steered, as only rotating wheels can grip the road. The driver, therefore, must always apply the brakes sufficiently gradually so as to allow the wheels to continue to rotate, even in an emergency. Earlier in this film, we saw how a truck is subject to gradient resistance. 